Krishna, you're talking about how uh, Cathay Pacific needs to cut costs significantly from here. How much more do they need to do? Well, as much as possible, really. I mean, Cathay has long term been a uh, one of the the more high cost operators in its in its peer group. Um, and lots of reasons for that unionization and, and, and history really plays a lot of a lot of a role in that. But um, a lot of the, the, the real thing with with a full service carrier is you can have a higher cost if you can actually generate higher revenue. So the margin between cost and revenue is still sufficiently great. The problem we have now is that if, if, if an airline is high cost, we're not going to see the sort of business travel revenue and corporate travel revenue that we've expected in the past. So it's, it, the top line starts to become a bit lower. Um, so I think as much as CAFE can cut is, is really going to be necessary at the moment. And they're starting to make some very good steps in that direction. Sure. But listening to you, it gives me a sense that the low-cost carriers in this environment may have an edge. Do they really? That, I think, is very much the, the feeling at the moment. Yeah, that, that um, it's going to be a price, I mean, going into next year as well, it's going to be a price sensitive market. Um, low cost carriers do come off a lower base. Certainly some of the, the lower cost is diluted by the fact that they do have slower turnarounds. They can't perhaps cram as many people into the aircraft. But I think spring is a very good example of, of where things are happening in the US, in, in, in China. It's, it's up to sort of 80% load factors and, and on operating at above last year's levels. So if that's an example, it's, uh, it's quite interesting. And we are seeing people like, uh, um, like for example, Greater Harbour talking about starting up in, in a year or so. That, that sort of thing is, uh, is, is really suggestive of the possibility for LCCs and the fact that investors may well see the chance for that to happen. I know of a couple of other low-cost startups in Europe who are, who are thinking along those very lines. So I think on the balance, yes, low-cost carriers are probably in a better position. Peter, based on the challenges that still lie ahead, though, I mean, you already mentioned some supportive shareholders, but with this cash burn that's going on, it makes me wonder if the $5 billion rescue package, which the Hong Kong government played a big part in, will be sufficient, or will more rescue funds be needed? Yeah, I think that's that's not just a question that relates to Cathay either. There have been a lot of substantial bailouts in, in other parts of the world with flag carriers, and it really is just a matter of uh, how long that, that bailout lasts, uh, perhaps till the end of this year before something else is needed unless the cash starts to come in. But my feeling is that particularly in the international markets, uh, that's perhaps not going to be enough. It's, uh, it's going to be a fine call. But once you start, if you're losing four, four, four billion, you know, it's, 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 it's a, a very serious place to start from and, and you've really got to start generating some revenues. So I was going to say, if you're losing 40 million a week in the US, then it's, uh, it's not easy to turn around from.